Hello, I am Ron Squire. Welcome to highlights of the 2013 Formula Sim Racing World Trophy. Round 13 is the Singapore Grand Prix, taking place in Milan, the Marina Bay Street Circuit. Known as the only full night race on the FSR calendar, Singapore last hosted a Grand Prix way back in 2010, meaning that this 23-turn circuit will put the drivers through his paces, and since this is a slow-speed circuit, high downforce will be required as the drivers will need to, to negotiate 46 laps of this tricky and slow circuit. Qualifying was a little bit of the uh, similar story at the front, with Daniel Kiss taking pole position in his Twisted Racing ahead of Alvaro Torres, who has been improving much on his pace since his win in Hungary. Norbert Lietner in his best position ever for Crown 7 Netrex, lines up in third, ahead of Kevin Siggy in his best position in fourth for PSR Team Green. Jarek Bourchevay makes his return with GSO Engineering, also on their return, in fifth place, ahead of Renz Kwab in sixth for Banti Bashkara Uain. Frank Schneider lines up in 10th with the now World Trophy leader Ben Testing in 8th for Hackball Racing with Jonathan Holmes and Miku Sokos who on his return with Sushi Racing failing to set a time in Q2 to start 9th and 10th. Thomas Coriola makes his return for Sisu Grand Prix to start at 11th with Fernando Guerrero in the second by cross positive sim racing car to start 12th ahead of James Sadler in the Macor and Jackson Went in the PSR Team Green with Toda Panjif making his debut in the PSR Team Orange in 15th. Disaster struck Adrian Falcon just before the start of the race as he tried to make it to the grid but unfortunately a technical problems forced him to miss out on the start. To the race start, and Alvaro Torres did not get the best of start he wanted, and Daniel Kiss pulled away from the Barry Cross positive sim racing car just before they reached the first corner. There seems to be a little contact uh, behind, but until Siskali uh, overcooked it and slammed it, Alpus is twisted racing, causing him to go into M Muru's Musk and Kumu and the uh, contact behind. Many, many people managed to get through the, in, in through the first corners with no major incident. Alvaro Torres tried to make a move on, on the inside of turn 3, but Lucas just managed to slam the door on the Spaniard. As they are going through turn 10, the drivers had loads of opportunities to go through past each other, but unfortunately, none of them got past. Alvaro Torres had another opportunity to try to get past Daniel Kiss down in turn 14, but once again, Kiss closed the door, meaning that Kiss will have to go rich more on the offensive if he wants to win. Lap 1 complete, and the order runners Kiss, Torres, Leitner, Klopp and Bosheve with Coriola just getting past Siggy, meaning that Schneider, Tusting and Skelly ran out the top 10. Meanwhile having signed for the pit lane, James Sadler will have to go all the way back up to the field to get back into contention. With Mako presenting a special livery raising awareness for Pink Ribbon Day with October being National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Meanwhile Siggy, who is still in fourth, needs to keep an eye out behind him. Which, when action was about to take place when Tusting was hit in the back by Siskelly and as a result he went wide and lost three places. Leonardo D'Souza was having problems of his own and he was struggling to get past Jonathan Holmes. As he went across the bridge he went to break but unfortunately broke too late and went into the back of, uh, butter, of the Butter GP. But however no damage was issued. As for Joe Gabriel, technical problems forced him out of the race meaning that Joe Saturn will have to rely on D'Souza. Tony Dupanjif was the next one to retire, although this one was more of a oversteer and crash affair as he uh, uh, spurned uh, too much and went to the barrier destroying his front wing. Meanwhile, Bolshevay was trying to get past Thomas Coriola going down the longer straight of the track, but unfortunately he was blindsided as he was forced to make way for Mark Alberts, losing Bolshevay one more position. Mark Albers first encountered his first real challenge of the day in the hands of Fernando Guerrero. Even though that Mark Albers was much more faster than Guerrero, he could not find a way past the positive sim racing car. And with only 30 plus laps remaining, this means that this battle was set to run and run to the end. Torres tried another opportunity to get past Kiss, this time going down the longest straight. Torres were lined him up for a pass and he went on the inside, forcing Kiss to go a little bit wide over the anti-cut. Kiss was able to keep his car stable, but unfortunately he had lost the lead to Torres. Lap 18 and Alvaro Torres made his dive for the pits, allowing Daniel Kiss to retake the lead of the race. But though during his pit stop he was also passed by Norbert Lietzner and he was also passed by Renskop and Schneider as he went out of the pits. But though he but though Schne Pastor Schneider and the Klopp would prove to be a non issue as he would prove over the next couple of laps. 
He caught up to Schneider, just going uh, past him, just at the uh, end of uh, turn three, and making his work to go all the way up to Klopp. Alvaro Torres uh, lined up for a pass on Klopp, and Klopp will prove defensive, so he found out, just coming up to turn five. Torres went on the inside, making the overtake look easy, and passed Klopp for third place, on his pursuit now for Norbert Leitzner. It only took off Oral Torres of only about a couple of corners to get past Leitner, and when he did, he managed to go up inside the Hungar Hungarian up to turn 14, and made his way back up to second place, and on his chase for Kiss. It seems Torres' work would pay off, as uh, Daniel Kiss went into the pits for the next lap, meaning that Torres and Leitner will take first and second on the road. The World Trophy leader, Ben Tusting, made his pit stop on lap 21 and hoping that his uh, win might be out of reach but that uh, his championship lead could stay in contention. After Tusting made his pit stop, he rejoins just behind Jonathan Holmes and will take a couple of more corners if he wants to get past the Abutta GP. But as proved earlier, Jonathan Holmes is proving much more difficult to overtake as Ben Tusting tried to make a move on turn 4 but Odo uh, Holmes wouldn't budge and it would take a couple more corners for Tusting to get past. Up to turn 14 and Tusting finally made his move for going into the inside of, T of uh, Holmes to move up to 7. The next man to overtake Holmes was Fernando Guerriero as he was lining up for a pass, he passed him just midway through the straight and regained 8th place. Frank Schneider is having a tidy race until turn 3 when he spun on, on the exit and he slammed into the barrier. He was able to continue all the way back to the pit lane, although he was passed by Frank and Frank Schneider was able to repair his front wing, although he was passed by fellow teammate Joey Bushiver in the assisted team GS for Engineering and has a lot of work to do to get back up. Lap 33, and Alvaro Torres made his second dive for the pits, meaning that Daniel Kiss will have to put the hammer down as he was now going bang back into the lead for the third time this race. But though with Torres just right behind him, it only took a couple laps for Torres to catch up to the Hungarian. A couple of laps later, when Torres did catch up to uh, Daniel Kiss, he ma made an inside pass of the Hungarian, uh, with uh, Daniel Kiss just pushing him a little bit towards the wall, Torres made an outside pass and come back into the lead of the race. As Fernando Guerrero was trying to battle with the two ghost speeds of France, the, the ghost speed of Franz Schneider trying to get past uh, Mark Alberts as an attempt of team orders. Franz Schneider got past Mark Alberts and went on his way. However, Ghost Speed's driver swap didn't pay off as far as Mark Albers was concerned, as in the next couple of corners he was passed by the, go uh, by the positive sim racing car of Fernando Guerriero. Mark Albers tried to go uh, on Guerriero once again going down the straight, but unfortunately an outside pass didn't really pay off for him and Guerriero still kept the position. Now he was chasing down Franz Schneider and Thomas Coriala in the Sissi Grand Prix. However, when they both crossed the bridge, Schneider broke a little bit too late and uh, 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 as a result of an overlock, Coriala still kept the position. However, on the next lap, just going into the first corner, Schneider slammed into Guerriero and on his own accord, he spun his car, letting Guerriero and Albers pass and nearly taking Campus out in the process. And Bochefe went past as well. Taking his fourth win of the year, uh, Alvaro Torres uh, gets ahead of John Holmes to lap him just to come home and win the race. Taking his fourth win of the season, but it would seem too late for the title challenge for him. Daniel Kiss comes home in second place despite his uh, two earlier battles with uh, Alvaro Torres earlier. And for the first time in his FSR career, Norman Lisa comes home to take third place and the final podium spot for Crown 7. Rance Klopp finishes in fourth, minimising the damage to his championship campaign, ahead of Ben Tusting, who's been leading the championship since Korea despite having no wins this season. Fernando Guerrero is in 6, ahead of Jorik Bushevay for GS Pro Engineering for their spectac spectacular return to form in 7th. 8th place goes to Alessio Campus, ahead of Franz Schneider is in 9th, with uh, Thomas Coriala on his return, rounding out the top 10, with the final point scorer being at Ronald Muru in 20th. However, after the race, 4 drivers were convicted of having not having their log files with them, and as a result being disqualified from the race. One of those drivers being Mark Corbett, which means he lost his 10 points in his battle with uh, Ben Tusting, meaning that Ben Tusting will still lead the championship, and with 2 rounds remaining, Ben Tusting could be the first driver in FSR history to claim a championship without scoring a win. 
Mark Gorbis is in second place, ahead of Franz Schneider in third. Daniel Kiss fourth, with Alfred Torres, whose time is running out, to claim the title. Renzo Kopp is in sixth, ahead of Carlos Martin in seventh. Jonathan Holmes eighth, with Alessio Campus ninth, and Gordana Valerino still in tenth place with 144 points. In the, in the constructors, should things go well for Ghost Speed in the next couple of rounds, they could claim the title if they finish ahead of by Cross Positive Sim Racing, who is on 472 points. Bad T Pishkari Wayne's chances are much more gone, and Butter GP is in fourth place. Hacksball Racing, despite Ben Tessing still being lead of the Drivers' Championship, Hacksball Racing is in fifth, but Twisted Racing is in sixth, ahead of PSR Team Green in seventh. Crown 7 Net Rex is still ahead of PSR Team Orange in 8th, just ahead of them in 9th, and Crown 7 Net Rex still round out the top 10 with 154 points. The next race is the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi, and you can watch that race live as it happens at Simrace TV on the 27th of October. Qualifying takes place at 11.35 GMT, with the race at 12pm. At 10 end, you can check out our forums at racedepartment.com for all ASD information. Check us out on both Facebook and on Twitter. Time is running out to join in on the FSR Fantasy League, so join in at the chance of first master prices by Hans and Fantasy Dove Formula Dash to Racing.net. And as I mentioned before, October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so please support Pink Ribbon Day and Cancer Research. We hope you enjoyed today's highlights. I'm Ron Squire and join us next time for the penultimate round of the 2013 Formula Sim Racing World Trophy.